Okay, now I can see this. Okay, so I'm Rachel, and I'm going to talk about my story of co-founding Fast.ai. I'm going to start back in high school because I have never liked exclusiveness. Um, I went to a very poor public high school in Texas, and it was very racially diverse. It was 30% uh, white, 30% Latino, 40% black. And a lot of the wealthier, um, wider school districts around us had a very um, kind of exclusive and sometimes racist attitude. Um, and I also saw that they had access to a lot more um, resources than we did. And I really hated that um, inequality and disparity in kind of educational access. Um, skipping ahead to 2013, since this is a lightning talk, um, I was working as a data scientist, and deep learning was starting to win a lot of Kaggle competitions, so I was very interested in it. Um, this was before any of the open source deep learning frameworks had been released. I watched Jeffrey Hinton's videos on Coursera, and then I went to hear a pretty famous researcher was speaking at a meetup. I was very excited, and his talk was um, pretty much purely theoretical, and during the Q&A, I asked a question about how he had initialized his weights and he said, oh, that's part of a dirty bag of tricks that nobody publishes. Um, and at the time, I was really disappointed, um, just feeling like the field was so exclusive and kind of inaccessible, because everyone doing it had you know, studied with the same four PhD thesis advisors, um, and then they weren't sharing the practical info. Um, also at this time, I was working for a tech company that was <laughs> very popular, but I was very, uh, very unhappy there. Um, and people were kind of constantly saying to me, like, oh, you're so lucky to work there. You're lucky to have this job. Um, and I, yeah, I was unhappy and kind of felt like, do I need to settle? Like, maybe this is as good as it gets. And I gave up on going to meetups and deep learning for a while. Skipping ahead now to 2015, um, I had my daughter. And it took me about eight weeks to recover from giving birth. So I was mostly lying down during that time. And Andre Karpathy had released his CNN course at Stanford online for free. And so I read his slides, I read them aloud to my newborn, and when I was feeling better, I coded all the assignments, and I thought it was fantastic. That was the most accessible introduction to CNNs I had seen. Um, and at this point, Cafe and Theano and Keros had been released. I think this was uh, kind of right before TensorFlow was released. Um, and so, these are really positive steps, um, Andre's course and having these open source frameworks available. Uh, but Jeremy and I still felt like a lot was missing. Most of the research was happening at Google and OpenAI, and they just have so much money and so much data and so many GPUs that I think they're not even aware of kind of the situation that most of the world trying to do this is in with very limited resources and often with much more practical problems, um, whereas their research focus tends to be uh, more theoretical. With starting Fast.ai, um, so our goal was we want eventually for anyone anywhere with limited resources to be able to use deep learning on the problems they care about. And that felt like such a kind of grandiose and maybe somewhat vague goal that um, I found it embarrassing to tell people what we were doing at first because it's just it's so ambitious. Um, and we did, we did it now. We were going to do it. And we still <laughs> don't know how we're going to do it. Um, uh, we tried a few things that didn't pan out, but we realized pretty early that a cycle of iterating between research and teaching would be helpful for us. And just as we've told you with deep learning to always start with um, kind of the simplest model possible on a small sample data set, that's what you all are for us. Uh, we were like, let's start by seeing if we can teach coders who will put in 70 hours of time to use deep learning. And when we proposed this class to USF, we weren't sure if that was even possible or how we would do it, um, but we knew we would try our best. And I think it was also important for us to kind of make this commitment and put ourselves on the hook of, okay, now we have to deliver. Um, yeah, and so that's how we've started. I've been very excited about how things have gone. I hope you are too. If not, let me know. Um, and we're, yeah, less than a year into Fast.ai's journey, and I'm excited about where we'll go in the future. Thanks. All right, <laughs> uh, and some of this is also <laughs> time. So, like, I mean, we'll come back to, to these. Um, so, there's a language called J, which is a descendant of APL for um, really vectorizing math um, operations. And it has a really neat notation, and so we felt like there's like some potential there to be able to kind of program more concisely. And, 
yeah and it's it's like it's a total mind trip to learn because you like like something that would be like 20 lines of code in another program is like nine symbols <laughs> but like the way those symbols are put together um so that was something but i think we're going to return to that that we uh, kind of were like studying some last year that we set aside um and then we're i think we're going to go back to this too we're kind of working on um some super resolution which like we have returned to with the course um so that we kind of put aside the other questions Yes. Well, so my personal focus in May and June will be on teaching a numerical linear algebra class at USF, um, which is you know, getting computers to do matrix operations very quickly and with acceptable accuracy. Um, I'm actually not even sure what, we want to come back to like, I and mean, one of our goals is to make it easier for people to deploy apps. And so we're hoping to make kind of several test apps and deploy them to see kind of what the pain points in that process are. So I think that's something we'll probably return to this summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one last question. Um, how do you measure your progress? Right? So how do you know to Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I guess it's somewhat subjective, and I mean, I find a lot of satisfaction of when I'm able to help people and kind of like getting positive feedback around that. Um, something Jeremy and I were talking about earlier is that I think I've also had to recognize things that I'm going to do less of to have more time for the high priority stuff, and so. Um, like I'm right now putting a lot of time into preparing for the course I'm going to teach in May. That's uh, really important to me, but I had to kind of choose like, okay, I need to like go to less conferences and go to fewer meetups and kind of decide like these are the things I'm going to put less time into. Thank you. So much. Thank you. <laughs>